Nah, son, baby. And this is another episode. Can't help but swing it, boy. Swing it, brother, swing. And this is your host. Nah, son, baby, 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 baby. Here we go. Microphone chat one two one two. This is your host, Nah, son, baby, and this is another episode of Swingers After Dark. And I'm with the lovely, er, I'm not going to say her name, name, name. I, I just want to ask my mystery crush, well, former crush, because she's now booed up right now, so I, I can't have them thoughts. I, I just want to ask her, you know, a few questions because I got her alone. Finally, I got her alone and she's looking scrumptious. She got some see-through fishnet shit. Ow, because that's my weakness, you know what I'm saying? Like Morris Day in the time, be like, fishnets. <laughs> Black penny hoes, see, see, see. And she be giving me, you know, she be wreaking havoc on my page because she finds the need to debate with me. But you know what? I don't go back and forth with women, but I make the exception because it's not a back and forth when I converse with her. It's actually a meeting of the minds. The meeting of the minds is a stimulating conversation. So I give her a pass. But if she's <laughs> were, if, if she was some other, you know, some regular run of the mill scallywag, I wouldn't even, I just give her the thumbs up like I usually do the motherfuckers on fake book. So, you know, I've known my mystery crush. I, I'm going to say that, you know, she's into poly, you know, polyamorous, polyamorous or how else you want to pronounce it, tomato, tomato. So, you know, were you always into a poly and what dynamic were you in? Are you into F M F or M F M? And for you slow motherfuckers, the F is female and the M is for male. So what kind of dynamic what way? First of all, what kind of dynamic you're in now, and how did you get become interested in poly okay. lifestyle? So maybe I should clarify first that um, my mate is poly, and I am what they have now titled Ambi Amory, which is I adapt to the relationship style of the person that I'm in love with. Because I believe love is acceptance. So for myself, I can venture between monogamy and polyamory depending on the partner or mate that I'm with. So were you always polyamorous? Um, I used to say no to that question. But when I look back on my relationships, I've always been very capable and willing and excited to share Um for my mate, to share my mate. Um, I have a very, I have a, a capacity for compersion versus jealousy. Like, I'm really happy to see when my mate is happy. Wow, uh, she used compersion. Big work. But, oh, you know, Lord. so it's like, would you ever go back to monogamy? Um, if my mate were monogamous, then I would be capable of doing that. So how can you turn it off and on? It's not really an off and on. Like I said, love is acceptance, and I accept my mate fully. So if my mate um, has a desire to engage in multiple relationships, then I'm capable of supporting that for my mate. Um, it doesn't really cause me a lot of uh, stress to do that. The happiness of my mate and our relationship um, being unique um, is enough to fulfill me. So I'm able to do that for them. So are you into female, male, female, or male, female, male? Or it doesn't matter? Um, it does, I'm bisexual, so it doesn't really... Um, I can go with either of those. Um, I haven't really come across um, a male, female, male where I'm the only woman i am open to that um i have read about it and uh just let me just say those women are my idols <laughs> so what kind of qualities do you look for in a man who you feel that is strong enough to you know become a leader 
and a female male female relationship or what is your idea of you know a female male female relationship because a lot of women they feel like well he doesn't need to lead i could lead or what do you seek for in a mate in a male and female in a poly in a threesome um i think poly has many different flavors so, so what's your flavor? Do you like ice cream, butter pecan, <laughs> vanilla what? I like butter pecan, but no. Oh, me. oh wow, we got something in common. Oh, we, we on the streak tonight. Keep going. <laughs> oh, actually, there's different flavors of poly. So there's parallel poly where neither of the, uh, it, let's just use female, female, male as an example. Um, parallel poly would be the male having relationships with two females that two women ugh, I can't believe I said that two women who don't um, interact with each other she's low key a feminist anyway keep going <laughs> they are aware of each other but they don't know each other and I'm gonna let that feminist um, little snipe <laughs> go you shouldn't be calling women females anyway see what I'm um, saying keep going that's not feminism but whatever so um, and then there's V poly where um, the two women would um, interact socially. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The man would still be the hinge um, in that V. Um, and then you can have a closed poly um, triad or however many people you have, but we'll just stick with the three, a closed triad where all three people interact with each other um, on a romantic level or even um, a familial level, if you, if you will, um, where they live together and don't share each other with anyone other than the three of each other. Okay, so does it matter about the arrangement of the alphabets? Because if it's <laughs> F M F, that means everybody knows each other, right? Um, there's different levels of interaction with any relationship. That's why there's different types of poly. So okay, so is M is F M F different from F F M? Or is it the same? It doesn't matter how the alphabets are arranged um, by the letters. The alphabet arrangements, I think that's more of a sexual um, perspective. For poly, I don't think it matters. Um, it's just a matter of the 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 hinge. And usually, in at least in the black community, um, we often favor the man being the hinge in a poly relationship. Okay, so so what do you look for in a man? Okay. Um, I think so. I could take notes. Oh my lord! So um, I don't look for a man who is poly, but I do look for someone who um, is considerate and is capable of <clears throat> sustaining relationships um, and not over uh, taxing themselves. There's only 24 hours in a day. Um, if you're going to fully sustain relationships, you should be able to do that. Um, in order for me, you know, to remain in a poly with that person. Does it make sense to be with someone who is so thinly spread that you can't, you know, spend time with them? So how do you determine, how can you measure spending time? How can you measure time? Because are you, are you the, you know, the side piece, quote unquote, or are you the main chick, quote unquote? Like, how, how would you measure that? There's no hierarchy. It's really just what you agree to. And that's the thing that I like about poly. A lot of the things that we don't discuss in monogamous relationships have to be discussed at the beginning of a poly. So, like, um, if you come into an established poly, or even if you are the first and you're moving into the poly with um, someone, um, one of the big questions is how much time do you anticipate, you know, on a regular basis that you want to see each other? And once that's determined, the way that you would know if someone is not able to manage that is if that changes. So say, for instance, you are good with seeing someone three times a week. Um, if they get into, you know, other poly relationships and that time with you begins to dwindle, to me, that is an indicator, a potential indicator that you may be taking on too much, especially if you haven't, um, you know, kind of discussed and made the adjustment. At the same time, it can change. It's not saying it can't change. It's just a matter of how you do it. So from a female perspective, how would a single woman go about establishing a poly like do you go to a club, it, it, like social media groups? How will a single woman go about finding a poly relationship if she's into that? Um, there's some ways. One way, <clears throat> excuse me, 
is to label yourself a unicorn, which I don't prefer that term. I think that that um, requires someone who wants to go into <clears throat> excuse me, an established couple. You, you got to excuse my guest because she, she, she's been cheering me on for the whole night. No, so, <laughs> so that's why, you know, she's hoarse because I'm she's so my sorry. biggest cheerleader. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> um, to establish that uh, a when they're originally in the relationship and they establish, can you remember what I was saying right there? I said, it's like, how can a woman, a single woman go about establishing oh, a poly yes. relationship? I'm sorry. Um, I think it's, like I said, you could label yourself a unicorn, which means that you're looking for a couple um, and to join them. I don't really favor that because I feel like you're fitting yourself into a relationship that was made for two. Um, what I do prefer is um, people who are in a poly circle. There's poly dating websites. There's poly groups. Um, people who come together with the understanding that they're creating a new relationship between the three of you. Even if the couple is married, they kind of are redeveloping a brand new relationship that gives equanimity to all three people. So um, the way to kind of find people like that, like I said, was maybe poly websites, poly groups. Um, for me, um, I never really looked for it. It kind of just found me. So... Poly is more than sex. It's a mental, spiritual, emotional connection, correct? It's, it's, it's not a relationship. Just, it's not just people fucking. Correct. It's a love love relationship of some kind. Love being... Um, and honestly, it doesn't even just have to be love. That's just what polyamory is. But I think we um, are polyamorous in ways that we don't even know. All of us. Um, if you have um, children and parents and aunts and uncles in a way you are sharing your love relationships from a familial perspective which could be considered poly technically so um there are many different ways to um engage in poly but yes polyamory is about loving relationships and that's the difference between a swinging you know when you swing with your partner that's pure physical you know you're just getting your nut off whereas polyamorous polyamory you getting to know that person building a connection with somebody that surpasses sex correct yes. because a lot of people get it confused they think just because you're polyamorous you're a swinger and that's not the case there's a difference between the two that is correct that because is everybody awesome. who are poly they're not swingers or they don't want anything to do with swinging yes you are absolutely correct and vice versa there are some who swing and are poly. I happen to be with um, someone who is poly and swings. So it can get um, um, tricky if you aren't aware, like you said, of the two, the difference between the two. So how would you, how would, how do y'all work it out? Um, we do a lot of communicating. And as you can tell, I don't have any problem talking. So <laughs> um Usually anybody that I'm with, and I should have said that, that's one of the things that I look for in someone is their ability to communicate because it's important to do a lot of communication. So, yeah, that's how we decipher. Like, there is a distinct difference between swinging activity and um, relationship activity. So, a closed mouth don't get fed just like a closed lash don't get head. Ow! So... <laughs> You know, so so that's hope for guys. You know, if they want to get to know you, they want all this scrumptious. Mm -mm -mm. They, they they have a chance, right? If they tickle your fancy, right? Um, yeah, I'm not exactly open to loving relationships. No, at no, this I'm, point, I'm talking about pure carnal, from, just like fucking, just like getting oh, it in no. savage. You mean swing? You yes. mean swinging? Um, under the right conditions, yes. There, there's always hope. So, so the guy doesn't have to ask your man, your dude, in the poly if he wants to play with you. Um, we work it differently than that. Um, it, it's more of a uh, getting to know people type situation for me. Um, I think that's important to my mate as well that um, there's an awareness on his part. So. But at the same time, neither one of us wants to know exactly when you're going to go play. Like, I don't need that information. He doesn't need that information. So what we do is usually if we go somewhere, um, kind of introduce each other to the people who seem attractive at the beginning that we might be interested in being with. 
And then from that pool of people, I can do, you know, pretty much what I want. And on that note, this has been another episode of Someone Gets After Dark, and this is your host, Nassan, baby. Check out my website at www.nassanblaze.com. That's www.nassunblaze.com. And check out my ebook, You, Me, Us, Them, The Swinging Manifesto. It's on Nook, Kindle, Ibis, Google Play. Go get it. it make you say, uh, na 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 ow. And also, shoot me an email at swingpodcast at gmail.com. That's swingpodcast at gmail.com. And hit me up with any questions and or concerns that you may have, have, have. Rate, share, subscribe, and comment on this podcast. Yeah, da 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 dig. And on that note, until next time, peace. You know.